Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Um, I've gotten one late book out, so I'm allowing myself one day per week to do videos and upload community posts on YouTube. And so uh, this is an interesting story from the recent history or maybe we should say final chapter of comics. One of the things, <coughs> obviously when I'm not making a video every day is I have free time to uh, get out late uh, comics, but also just kind of have other hobbies. I've really gotten into cooking lately. And then when you look back at comics after not just being immersed in it every single day, um, it's pretty shocking how uh, destroyed it is. And I would say <coughs> on the American scene, pretty universally, I watched this movie called uh, King of New York uh, from like 1990, Christopher Walken. I forgot that Christopher Walken wasn't always old. Like, I also watched um, Rolling Thunder for the first time. I forgot that uh, Tommy Lee Jones used to be like a soap opera guy. I just always remember him being old. Uh, but <laughs> I kind of forget. I kind of forget my point. Oh, anyway. Spoiler. Go check out uh, King of New York. The cast is amazing. And, um... <coughs> I'm surprised it's not mentioned more. It's a really good New York City crime movie. Uh, as was uh, State of Grace, uh, Light Sleeper. I think they were all kind of um, overpowered by Goodfellas, which came out roughly the same uh, time frame. But uh, anyway, there's a scene where, spoiler, uh, Christopher Walken's character is in a shootout. And you think he's okay. Um, it looks like maybe he got shot, but then he's kind of walking around. He's going through the uh, Times Square subway station, which I'm a fan of. I don't know. Everyone talks about it like it's hell. It's one of my favorite stations, anyway. So then he goes up into Times Square, gets into a taxi, and he dies. He got shot, uh, and apparently it was a fatal wound. Uh, but it took a little while. He didn't die right away he didn't die in a hail of bullets he caught one round it went someplace it's not supposed to go um and uh he died not immediately not in a uh very like john woo-esque way but he died nonetheless and i feel like uh comics mainstream comics and also unfortunately crowdfunding are both in that liminal period between where his character got shot and where he died. He's walking around, he's in a crowd, he's checking out the sights, but fatal injury. With um, mainstream comics, it was um, cancel culture and diversity hiring. With crowdfunding, I believe it is lateness and uh, fighting. Um, so it's this really sad thing where I'm returning after, you know, a few days away and I'm looking around, I'm looking at sales, I'm looking at still hidden sales, I'm looking at views, not just on my channel, but on everyone's channel. Um, and if you're covering comics, except for maybe like, um, Comics Explained, which is basically explaining superhero franchises to normies. That's still doing good, but Comic Storian, who used to be huge, completely obliterated. There's really no interest in comics, not much anyway. Um, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I mean, if Gail Simone and Tom Taylor are acting normal, things are really 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 bad. Um, but um, I was talking to a friend, and I was saying, you know, comics isn't like oh, why did the Roman Empire die where it's all a mystery and there's like 500 different theories? The death, demise, shrinking, diminishment, whatever you want to call what happened to comics, there's really no mysteries. There was a series of decisions and uh, 
failures to act that did it. So one of these is why are there lesbians everywhere? <laughs> like, why are there so many lesbian characters? Why are there so many gay creators, uh, female? Uh, I've seen uh, Wes bringing up this this game that I play as well, which is you see solicits for a new uh, comic book, Marvel and DC, female writer, you don't recognize their name, go to their social media, 90 to 95% of the time, they are at least claiming to be gay, which is essentially mandatory uh, for comics. And you say, like, where did this come from? <laughs> like, um, and one of my, I think the first insider I had uh, said, you know, everyone likes all these conspiracy theories, but I was there when it started to collapse, and it was just dumb people hiring people even dumber than, than themselves. So it was just a series of dumb decisions by progressively dumber generations of mostly editors and things like that. But there was this sudden uh, propaganda about 10 years ago that um, comics was very hostile to women. So this group, the Valkyries, uh, started up, which was female retailers, but also trans so it was men it was okay we know the deal and there was so much press for these people and this group never got that large it started off a handful of people ultimately you could have membership which, which was just saying i'm woman or trans or gay or something and so they would let you into the club which was essentially just a facebook group <laughs> Uh, going back and reading about this because I was aware of it at the time it got a ton of press but you realize there was nothing really there it's like women have started their own group and they've got a badass name and they're gonna have a Facebook group and cat t-shirts and what's going on exactly was there a problem now ultimately what it was was the founder Kate Leth just wanted a career in comics. Uh, the Valkyries got a ton of press, which got Kate Leth uh, work at Indies, and then Marvel, and then Animation. She had a lot of issues, let's say, uh, but I believe she still has some kind of living she's making uh, in uh, Animation, which is one of the things about women in comics is Rarely is this the destination. Louise Simonson really wanted to work in comics. Um, everyone else, uh, they kind of fell into it, were recruited. Even a favorite uh, writer of mine, Anna Senti, she says it in like every interview she's ever done. She just needed a job. The Village Voice had a ad for a secretary. She didn't know anything about comics. She slowly learned, she worked her way up, and uh, she had a really good run, mainly at uh, Marvel. Um, but, so they created this, uh, this fallacy, and we're going to see it in stuff like this uh, idiotic... So it starts, uh, what was it? October, or sometime in 2014 it starts. And then in 2015, they're getting these ridiculous articles... Deconic, Leth, and more declare, Beware the Valkyries! Make way for the Valkyries, swooping in to smash the comic book patriarchy, and maybe go out for pizza later. So it's it's just a bunch of nothing, weird, vague grievances, like Kelly Sue Deconic saying, like, I just got into playing tabletop games, and I was kept out. Uh, I tried to join in high school, but uh, the guy thought I was making fun of him. Uh, but I was just a big nerd. Okay, why didn't you start doing it in college or your 20s or your 30s? And then basically, I'm just going to break it down real simple. Men in geek spaces like things that are popular, unpopular, used to be, fading, niche, cult. Women, for the most part, of course there are exceptions, like things that are popular when they are popular because they're popular. So in this time frame, uh, 
MCU is really blowing up. They got all kinds of articles about geek culture. So all of a sudden, 43-year-old Kelly Sue DeConnick is the geekiest geek who ever lived. And men were always trying to keep her down except for when they were propping her up or... Anyway. So uh, they talk about this, but there's no there there. It's just kind of like, women, yeah! So then it became this big, huge push for... We need more women in comics. We need more female characters. We need more female. So then we get the milkshake girls. And we're going to get to that because this is going to shock you. Sit down. Are you sitting down? Lay down. Are you laying down? What floor? Second floor? Go to the basement because you're going to about to pass out because you're never going to believe that a group almost exclusively made of women quickly fell apart due to petty infighting. And what was the cause? Well, me? A little bit? Kind of? So uh, they had the uh, milkshake incident in 2017, and uh, this drew uh, drove a wedge into the uh, cat piss smelling heart of the Valkyries, to which uh, this woman who is... Uh, one of the first black women to run a comic shop. Not the one in Philadelphia that got all the press. This one was Visionary Comics in California. So she joined the Valkyries. And um, it's just petty complaints. <laughs> there's nothing there. There, There is no, there's nothing. Oh my God. It's just petty, bitchy, acrid complaints. I gave suggestions and people didn't like them. And... None of the admins were black, but you just said this is, I mean, it's a, it's a retailer group. You said you're the only black female store owner, one of the few. If you're one of the few black female retailers and you join, you know, you know, you understand what I'm saying. So she was faulting the, uh, the group for not being diverse enough when they had all kinds of different lesbians. Um, but, uh, <laughs> So there's actually no real accusation, but she did get really pissed off that everyone uh, rallied around uh, uh, blonde white Heather Antos who got, what, like five down votes or mildly rude comments on a selfie. The entire industry had to stop. And then once a year for like the next five years, the entire industry ground to a halt to check on Heather. How are you doing? How are your feelings? Are you sad? Are you mad? That makes me feel bad. Um, And uh, she got pissed that uh, Heather Antos got all of this uh, attention. So she started accusing the uh, Valkyries of racism. And this is a weird uh, position for what does she say, white feminists, white liberals in general, because they are incredibly racist. (laughs) Like, they are the most racist group out there. But they also use racism as a cudgel because their form of using this was, we're going to give an accusation. The accusation is the proof. Ipso facto, nobody can work with you. Nobody can talk to you, anything, or they will also be stained with this accusation so it worked really well when they were just launching it at everyone um but then when it gets used against them they're like fuck we have no idea what to do let's just disband so then we get this article women's comic book retail group the valkyries disbands following diversity crisis and they give this you know very awkward mia culpa while not admitting to anything Um, and they just basically like, but what actually happened was they had by 2018 accomplished their mission. Again, they're shutting down due to a blog in September that was published the previous year. What really happened was this was, uh, a vehicle to deliver a couple of things. Number one was the myth that there were tons of female fans that wanted to be in comics fandom 
and pros, they were being kept out due to sexist. When the reality was there just wasn't that many women who were interested in either one. It's somebody brought this up. <coughs> Great point. So all these women writing all these superheroes. Where's the uh, crowdfunded female written superhero books? There really aren't any. Where are the super popular, you know, creators like Mags? Why aren't they doing crowdfunding? It's because without corporate backing, because they sell themselves as corporate diversity mascots, essentially, there's no real demand. Even a writer I love, like Anne Nascenti, a bit of a hothouse flower in regards to her career. When she starts at Marvel, she makes friends, she gets mentored, she learns all the characters very well. Uh, she helps expand X-Men into a franchise, not just a book. Right, Daredevil? But then when she goes pretty much everywhere else, it just doesn't work. She was given multiple swings at bat at DC uh, when Didio was there. Nothing really happened. She's done some uh, Dark Horse work under, uh, what was it, Karen Berger, Berger Books. Not really anything happened. Uh, Louise Simonson is still doing really good writing, basically ignored. But they were there to deliver or help create the false propaganda that women were being kept out, to which there was a big push to hire women, hence all the milkshake girls. Then the milkshake girls get attention. One of their members doesn't like it. Then they have to dismantle, but they were already successful. They've created essentially permanently the myth, the propaganda that this massive giant group of women was being kept out of comics. And if they were welcomed, then Shit, it would, what, double sales? That's not what happened. It was basically a bunch of women who wanted to work in Hollywood. They wanted to work in animation. They wanted to work in video games. So they used the low self-esteem, essentially, of the comic book industry to bully, cajole, blackmail their way into positions of prominence, I would say, more than power. By this time, Kate Leth had a career in animation, so she didn't give a fuck about this. The, 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 the myth of sexism had been, I heard this phrase, concretized. It had been made concrete, uh, to which it was settled science. And then you had the milkshake girls, and we're still stuck with them, essentially, forever. Um, so it was massively successful in three things that led to massive failure in the industry, um, creating a false narrative that comics needed to focus on women instead of their main audience, which was male overwhelmingly uh, for almost a century. It led to the Mean Girls, the Milkshake Girls, which then led to a bunch of Whisper Networks. Again, Scott Snyder left DC after spending years recreating the universe to his vision because he was beset by milkshake girls and people that they got into the industry. Um, so you see this kind of vicious cycle. Uh, and this is, uh, like I said to a friend, there's no real mysteries in comics. Um, you can go and you can parse year by year and you can see where things start. And if you're wondering why 90 to 95% of the time, when you see a Marvel, a DC comic with a female writer whose name you don't recognize, it's because there is still to this day a push to hire, to essentially create parody, an equal, am an equal amount of female and male creators for a fan base a customer base that, despite their vicious efforts, is still overwhelmingly male. So you don't have to wonder why uh, a new lesbian just dropped uh, today in some anthology or 
Is it we're 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 entering the uh, anthology season, the diversity anthology season. So this is uh, Black History Month, February. Of course, we got Gay Pride in June, and then I think they got something for Asians, something for Latinos. There's gonna be so many shitty, oh, shitty anthologies, uh, clogging uh, comic book store shops uh, shelves over the next few. Well, I was going to say months. They're going to come out over the next few months. They're going to clog the shelves for years. Uh, but anyway, before I go, First Kill graphic novel link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.